I'm gonna help you guys get going on this special right triangles maze. So once you guys uh, print this out, or if you don't have a printer, you can just go ahead and use a piece of paper. Then we're gonna find the start in this first square on the top left. And let's take a look at what I have. It looks like I have a 30 degree and a 90 degree. So then if I just subtracted from 180, then I would get 60. And so that we have our 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. Now these are easiest when we can start from the side across our smallest angle. So it's nice if I can start with the side across from 30. But in this particular case, I do not know that side, it's unknown. And then the next thing I might look for is, do I know the hypotenuse, hypotenuse as well? Because if I knew the hypotenuse, then I knew that this would be half as much. But in this case, I do not know either of those. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make up a name for this short side. And I could use X, but well, you know, we already have an X over here, so I'm gonna use a different name. I could use maybe A or B or Y or Z or anything, anything that's not X. So I'll just go with Y here. Okay, so if I call that Y, then what I know is that uh, the side across from 60 is short side times root 3. The side across from 60 is short side times root 3. So my short side is y and then uh, times root 3. So I know a couple things now about that side across from 60. I know that it's y root 3 or short side times root 3 and I also know that it's 6. So those are my two things that I now know about it. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, set up a spot for me to work. Okay, and let's think about, well, what are those two things that I know about it? So first of all, I know that it's uh, y root three. And then the other thing I know about it is that it's six. So I know that y root three and six represent the same side, okay? And so those are going to be equal. Now, the only thing I have left to do is just to figure out, well, what should I plug in for y to make this statement true? So what times root three is equal to six? A couple different ways to go about this. Uh, first of all, you might just think about, well, what could I plug in for y to make this actually work? And again, when I look at the right side, I see that there is no square root symbols. So I wanna somehow get rid of that root three by multiplying by something. And if I were to multiply by another root three, well then root three times root three would be maybe root nine, which is just three. So I'm already at three, and now I need to think three times what would get me to six? Well, two times three would get me to six. So now I know that two root three times root three would be six, and therefore my y value is two root three. Okay, so if I kind of come back to my picture over here, then I'm gonna replace my y value with two root three. And notice what I'm trying to find here is x. So I'm trying to find this hypotenuse, this x value here. So I have to do a little bit more work, and I know that my hypotenuse in a 30, 60, 90 is going to be twice as long as the shortest side. So I know that this x value, this hypotenuse, is just going to be double or two times whatever the shortest side is. Again, the shortest side is across from 30, and we found that to be two root three. So now when I finish this out, I get that x is equal to, two times two is four, so four root three. And now that I've solved it, then I can kind of figure out which way to go in the maze. So in the maze, my options would be to either go the four root three or the eight root three. And I'm gonna think about, well, what did I get here? I got that my solution for this x value was four root three. And so that means I'm gonna go ahead and go this direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and color this in, in the maze, and then that means that I'm gonna go ahead and move on to this problem next. And then after I complete that problem, 
then I'm gonna figure out, well, is the answer eight? Then I'll go that way. Is the answer eight root two? Then I'd go down. Is the answer four root two? Then I'd go kind of down and left. So depending on what you get for an answer here, that will tell us which direction to go. And you continue this process through the entire maze. Now I'm just gonna show you an alternative way to solve for that same y value. So instead of just trying to think about what we could plug in for y, we could more algebraically solve for y. And so right now, if it says y times root three, to get y alone, then I would just divide by root three. Divide by root three, let me see if I can get that a little bit neater. Okay, and I'm gonna divide by root three over here. So on the left side, it cancels. I have just y on the left side. On the right side, I have six divided by root three. And then we can do what's called rationalize the denominator or get rid of the radical on the denominator. And I know that if I multiplied by another root three on the denominator, then I would get root three times root three, which is just three. You might think root nine is three. But in order to not change this value here, I need to multiply by root three over root three. So I'm really multiplying by one. So now on top, I'll have six root three. And then uh, one more little step here. I can see that six divided by three is two and then I'll get two root three, and I'll get the exact same thing that I got when I was just kind of thinking about what y would be, but that's a more algebraic approach to solving for it.